Well, it's the last week of 2019, and you know what that means. Worst week is upon us. No, 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 no. You're supposed to use the other effect, the one where my voice goes really low and deep and kind of bombastic and menacing. So it's, you know, has more impact. Let's try it again. <clears throat> Worst week is upon us. There. See, that's that's better. <laughs> Welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, today I will be kicking off my special week-long 2019 year-end spectacular-ish. Uh, yes, I will be giving you a bunch of lists this week, culminating in my, of course, my favorite albums of 2019 at the end of this week. Uh, and between now and then, I will be giving you, well, not quite so much the typical lists that other YouTubers give you, because I'm not your typical music YouTuber. Uh, yes, a few of the lists will be uh, exclusive to my own channel, just because they are based on monthly features that I do just on my own channel. Uh, but uh, today I will be just, uh, it's basically an introductory, sort of uh, my year in music, basically, of what the year in music uh, held for me and what happened to me, uh, as well as a general year in review as well as uh, a special list of uh, 2018 albums, uh, what I call my Second Thoughts of 2018, uh, which I'll explain in just a few minutes. But first of all, uh, yeah, just to talk about my year in music, uh, unfortunately, my attention to music was rather intermittent this year. As you all uh, have heard about, those of you who've been watching my channel for most of the year, uh, I've had everything from uh, natural disasters with the big snowstorm that we had at the end of February, and the associated uh, cleanup of the damage related to that snowstorm, uh, as well as a home renovation project. <laughs> the re-roofing of our house that uh, took, oh, a couple months all told. We bought the materials. My brother is a jack of all trades with regard to home remodeling projects, so he actually did the labor himself. So that was free to us. All we had to pay for was the uh, materials. But of course, you know, he recruited my help, naturally. Uh, but anyway, uh, and also even we even had a couple of medical scares in the family. Uh, I, I think I only told you about one before, but uh, there was another one that uh, has fortunately turned out to be uh, pretty much resolved now. But uh, yeah, all of those things took, uh, as I said, my attention away from music. Um, and of course, with the uh, money associated with all that stuff, some of my money was taken away from uh, that I would have spent on music, which I suppose maybe that's a good thing in the grand scheme of things. Maybe it's it's a... Uh, suggestion from the cosmos that uh, maybe I should be spending a little less money on music. I don't know. But uh, anyway, so yeah, uh, as I said, I did not pay as much attention to new music this year as I would have liked to have done. But anyway, yes, that is something for you guys to uh, keep in mind, bear in mind, as we go through my list this year. There's lo a lot of great music I'm sure that I missed, just was not able to devote the time and attention to, and thus will not show up on my list because I wasn't able to listen to it. But that is where the uh, list that I'm going to bring you at the end of this video comes in, as I will explain uh, when we get to it. But yeah, we had, uh, this seemed to be a year of losses in music, uh, not quite so many as in recent years. I mean, in what was it, 2016, that, uh, you know, David Bowie and Tom Petty, didn't we lose both of them in the same year? It was just, there was this one year recently that was a huge year uh, in losses for music. A lot of great voices and uh, instrumentalists we lost this year. Doris Day, a great, great pop singer, classic pop singer from the 40s and 50s. Dr. John, a New Orleans-based jazz and blues singer. James Ingram, a great R&B singer. Joao Gilberto, who was a great Brazilian uh, artist. Leon Redbone, Rick Okasik of The Cars. Ginger Baker of Cream and Blind Faith. Uh, Dick Dale, a classic, one of the founders of surf guitar from the 50s, and four, uh, 50s I think. Peter Tork of The Monkees. Michel Legrand, who is a French uh, composer and conductor. Eddie Money, great pop and rock singer from the 80s. Art Neville of the Neville Brothers. Daryl Dragon, better known as the captain from the Captain of Tennille. Uh, Molly Duncan, a sax, uh, the sax player and one of the founding members of the Average White Band. Hal Blaine, who was a drummer from the Wrecking Crew, and Jimmy Johnson, who was a Muscle, Muscle Shoals guitarist. So two great, great, great session guitarists who are probably heard on thousands of recordings over the years. And then a great, uh, unfortunately very young, producer named Busby we lost uh, this year. I think he was only in his 40s. And then one just very, very recently uh, happened, uh, Ali Willis, who was a songwriter, 
Uh, she was res responsible for, uh, among them, her many hits, uh, I'll Be There For You, the theme from the show Friends by the Rembrandts, as well as a couple of great uh, songs by Earth, Wind & Fire, September, and Boogie Wonderland. So yeah, just a great songwriting talent we lost this year, along with probably many others that I uh, forgot to mention here. So uh, yeah, a bunch of great losses in music, and of course, a great personal loss for me. Uh, well, not a person, but uh, yes, a store. We lost Skips this year, uh, one of the best music stores in the entire Northwest, and if you ask me. Uh, he was around for 30 years. Uh, I bought countless, countless great CDs and, at the end, records uh, from him over the years, or over my 24 years that I was a, a customer there. Uh, but I was glad to have gotten in the interview with him uh, back in the spring that I did. It was, I think, probably the best thing that I did on my channel this year. Yeah, it was just so much fun just sitting there and talking with him for, what was it, three hours, I think I chatted with him and had two, two, two and a half hours of video that I, that I had to trim down to one hour. It was exhausting and time-consuming, but uh, it was a whole lot of fun. Uh, that was, uh, yeah, as I said, that was the most fun I had on my channel this year. And uh, I also enjoyed my uh, uh, the theme week that I just recently did, Canada week. That was a whole lot of fun. And uh, the collaborations I did in that week and over the year in general with uh, Shayok from the Kurbo Shayok. One of, he's quickly becoming one of my best friends uh, on that I've made out of YouTube, as well as Ryan from True North Reviews. Uh, hopefully my friendship with him and with uh, Garrett from Young Entertainment Specialists will grow and progress over the coming year, over 2020. Uh, I, I really enjoy your videos, guys, and I uh, I like chatting with you. I, I don't chat with Garrett and Ryan very much, uh, probably not as much as I should, because it's always fun when I uh, exchange messages with them and so forth. So, uh, yeah, and uh, no, I don't think I collaborated with you, Noah, at all this year, did I? Hey, maybe in 2020, Let's let's uh, maybe think about doing some more collabs with you this year, Noah. But yeah, um, as I said, as, I, as I've mentioned before, all the great friends that I've made through YouTube, it's just fantastic. I'm coming up on my two-year YouTube anniversary, so uh, I'm sure I will be celebrating that in uh, late January, I think is when this happens. I have uh, hit 75 subscribers. Um, yeah, I, I surpassed 50 earlier this year, so... Uh, I'm thinking I think my subscriber count is starting to ramp up a little bit faster as time goes on so uh, hopefully that trend will keep continuing uh, I, I'm not building subscribers as fast as a lot of other youtubers out there but hey uh, in some ways I appreciate the slower more gradual growth it's a lot of fun I love doing this uh, it's it's still a hobby so uh, and I like doing what I like to do on YouTube I, I don't like to pressure myself into you know, just reviewing every uh, new release that comes along. But, oh, and that brings me to another change that has happened uh, in this past year. I have joined the streaming, well, revolution. It's not really a revolution because it's been, it's ingrained in our culture. It's here to stay. Streaming is. But, uh, yes, I have finally officially uh, in July, I think it was, uh, became a streamer. So, uh, and I've gradually been listening to more and more albums online. And I think that maybe in this way, maybe I will be reviewing more albums. That plus the fact that uh, hopefully this next year will be uh, more calm uh, outside of my YouTube channel than 2019 was. Uh, you know, knock on wood. Uh, so I will be able to devote more time to new music as it comes out. And so anyway, uh, speaking of uh, YouTube channel statistics, I just mentioned my subscriber count. Uh, I thought it would be fun to take a look at my most viewed videos on YouTube, which I, I actually printed out. Uh, my most viewed video actually is, uh, it happened in April of this year, it was my Now and Then video on Sarah Bareilles, where, where I talked about her Amidst the Chaos and Little Voice albums, which uh, that kind of surprised me. I mean, it's like, of all the uh, artists out there, my Sarah Bareilles video got the most views. And that got 529 views as of the time that I am recording this. And then my second most viewed video was actually from this past February. Uh, it was my Now and Then on the Backstreet Boys, where I talked about their DNA and Millennium albums. And that got 417 views. Uh, so yeah, those two videos combined got 946 views, so just shy of 950. And uh, then my third most viewed video was actually from November of 2018. That was where I did... Um, Two albums by different artists. This was not a now and then. It was just two album re reviews. Boy George and Culture Club's Life, as well as Edie Brickell and New Bohemian's Rocket. That one got 203 views. So yeah, all those three combined just got just shy of 1,150 views. That's 1,149 to be exact. And then uh, rounding out my top five were my 
uh, ranking of Weird Al Yankovic's albums for my uh, my Weird Al week, which I did back in May of 2018. That one got 181 views. And my fifth most viewed video was my actually my CD collection video, which I did back in November of 2018. And that one got 179 views. So yeah, all combined, my top five viewed videos got just over 1,500 views, 1,509 views. So, And yeah, speaking of that uh, CD collection video, I've actually been thinking about possibly sometime in the next year, 2020, doing an update of that video, a, a sequel, if you will, because I've... Uh, I think since then I've expanded my CD collection to a fairly significant degree. Uh, yes, despite, as I just said, being a little tight on budget this past year. Uh, well, thanks to, first of all, to Skip's going at a business sale, I was able to get a bunch of CDs at, at pretty darn low prices, very, very good discounts. And also, uh, one of the other stores uh, in town, I just recently, in the last couple of weeks, uh, I think I posted this on Twitter, I rediscovered they had actually moved and expanded their dollar CD section. So uh, they've got an upstairs now, and they moved it upstairs so that I, know, I wasn't able to see it until the manager told me, hey, it's upstairs. Uh, so, you know, darn him. I've uh, <laughs> come home since then with uh, probably 15 dollar CDs. Uh, so, yeah, I've, I've got a bunch of stuff, you know, between that and uh, my Portland trip. Uh, actually, two Portland trips. I got a, had a friend come up from San Diego. Oh, and also something else that reminds me that happened this year. I was able to visit a couple of record stores out in uh, one in Central Oregon and one out on the coast that I'd never been to before. Uh, very, very nice stores. So, and I was able to pick up a few goodies there. So, I've, I've got a pretty good little uh, back stock of CDs that I have yet to listen to. So, January and February, you know, other than doing my uh, backtracks and bargain bags uh, things, I, I might be a little infrequent on videos there because I want to. Just kind of relax, not have to pay attention to the new albums, unless there's something that I really, really want coming out. Uh, hopefully Megan Trainer will come out with her new album, finally, which she had promised last January. And, and speaking of which, I was able to, uh, as I mentioned my uh, expanded CD collection, I was able to accumulate some discographies this past year that I was uh, had been wanting. Uh, one, well, one of them that I had uh, not had been wanting for not very long, but uh, just recently discovered this guy, Joe Satriani. I was able to get his uh, the complete studio recordings box set, uh, 15 CDs. Uh, just a fantastic instrumental rock guitarist. If you haven't heard him, he's just amazing. Uh, so yeah, I was able to. Uh, I got this for my birthday actually uh, off of eBay for a pretty darn good price. And then uh, the other notable discography that I was able to. Uh, I believe complete. Yeah, I've got it. I've completed their studio albums discography. Weezer. Uh, so I, I, yeah, the, the the time finally came for me to appreciate Weezer. I'd tried uh, listening to them a few times over the past ten years or so, and it, they didn't click. But this time they clicked. And then, of course, you've heard me talk about them a few times this year. Kebmo. I've got uh, was able to. I don't, I'm missing one of his studio albums, I think. But so yeah, an, an almost complete discography of Kebmo whom I've been enjoying very, very much. Yes, I, I've gotten into, and that's something else that's changed this year, I've gotten into blues and a little bit of country music a little more. Oh, and uh, even some hip-hop. I've started enjoying hip-hop uh, to an extent here and there, So, which uh, you will notice in my uh, favorite albums of the year countdown coming up this week. And then uh, The Killers was able to get their, I believe, their complete uh, studio albums discography. They, I think they've got a live CD out there that I don't have yet. Oh, and... Uh, this actually ticks two boxes. Uh, a discography that I've uh, accumulated, Sondra Lerka. I've gotten, I believe, all of his studio albums. No, I'm missing his most recent one. And, as you can see here, I've been buying more vinyl. That is, uh, thanks in large part to Skip's going out of business sale. Yes, yeah, so the, the only downside to that is Skip had to go out of business for me to really start uh, expanding my vinyl collection in earnest. But, uh, yeah, it, you know, as I said, with the prices that he had, the, the discounts that he had going there, I, I couldn't not start really getting into vinyl. I've uh, been listening to a lot more vinyl, and pr I'm pretty sure I'll be buying fewer CDs uh, with my uh, now that I've been streaming, and uh, possibly buying more vinyl, because I've been getting more and more of an appreciation for the vinyl format, and that's something that I think will continue into 2020. But anyway, uh, enough rambling. I don't want to make this video two and a half hours long. Uh, you people are here for the lists, aren't you? Yeah. That's what this week is all about. It's all about the lists. Uh, but before we get started on the 2019 lists, which will be in tomorrow's video, I want to take you guys back to 2018 for a few minutes. Uh, yes, yeah, so let's, let's travel back in time, shall we? Uh, yeah, the, the principle behind this list, it's one I plan to do every year, is that, well, 
I don't have the time or opportunity to listen to everything that comes out in the current year, so I'm bound to miss some stuff. And I, sure enough, I did. I, I, I've missed some stuff every year, pretty much. And so that's where this list comes in. I like to call it my second thoughts of 2018. And so, uh, yeah, this is basically five albums that uh, were released in 2018, but I didn't either didn't know about or didn't have the opportunity to listen to until 2019. And as a result, uh, being that they're on this list, they probably would have made my favorite albums of 2018 list. So this is, I guess, a, a footnote or a, a revision, if you will, of my 2018 favorite albums list. So yes, in approximate order of where they would have appeared on my list, let's go through them, shall we? Uh, my first one is EGO by Lucy Silvas. She is a British uh, singer. She started out as a pop singer and was much more popular back in the UK than, than here. She was pretty much unheard of here. Uh, and I actually found out about her through a duet with a French pop singer, ironically enough. Uh, so yeah, I've got her, her first pop album that was released back in the UK. I, I want to get her second one. She released two albums back in the UK and kind of had a rebirth or a, a renaissance of sorts in, I think it was 2015, uh, with her album Letters to Ghosts, which came out, uh, I, and I think that was actually, that might have even been more popular here in the States than it was in the UK. So she's become kind of popular, uh, popular enough to warrant a follow-up album to that one called EGO. And uh, in, in that album, uh, Letters to, to Ghosts, she basically, uh, in her rebirth, uh, ad adopted more of a rock-oriented sound, kind of like Sheryl Crow. That, that's who she most readily reminds me of. And uh, in my opinion, that's for the better. I mean, not that her pop stuff wasn't good. It was, it was just fine. It was great. And yes, in fact, I liked her album, last album, Letters to Ghosts, so much that I don't know why I waited over a year to pick this album up. But I'm, I'm glad I did. Uh, it's, as I said, she's got a great Sheryl Crowish rock kind of a sound going on here. Uh, there's a track on here called Girls from California, which has, it has, has a real Laurel Canyon pop rock sound from the 60s or 70s. And then she rocks out on a song called First Rate Heartbreak. It's a, a first rate rocker. And then a song called Everything Looks Beautiful, which is a ballad with a wonderful 60s soul kind of a vibe to it. So yeah, this one... This one, if I'd uh, known about it, as I said, uh, back in 2018, I would have put it, it would have been definitely in my top 20. So yeah, check it out if you haven't yet. Uh, Lucy Silvas, her album EGO, and also her previous album Letters to Ghosts is uh, a must-listen as well. And then uh, one of my favorite uh, Canadian artists I talked about uh, in my Canada Week last, uh, last month is a reggae pop group called Magic. And uh, I, little did I know, they actually sneaked out a third album called Expectations. Yeah, despite enjoying their second album more than their debut, I somehow missed this one. Uh, went under my radar. And uh, I actually just might like this album more than uh, the most of all their albums so far. It has a little hints of EDM in the songs uh, Darts in the Dark and How You Remember Me. Very good songs with little touches of electronic, as I said. And there's also an achingly gorgeous love song on here called More of You. That is an absolute standout on this album. And then there are uh, great upbeat songs reminiscent of their classic sound like Kiss Me and A Little Bit of Love. So yeah, this is just a, a worthy addition to their discography in my opinion. This would definitely be in their top 15 from last year, possibly in their top 10. And then this next one, I actually have Kyle from Track by Track to thank for this one. This was in his uh, favorite albums of 2018 list. It is the album Colored by R&B singer Priscilla Renee. An excellent, excellent album. I, I'm sorry I overlooked it for so long. I picked it up in March or April of this past year, and it's just fantastic. Yeah, I actually had it on CD at first, but I enjoyed it so much that I picked up the vinyl during Skip's going out of business sale. It's just wonderful soul and R&B album by a tremendous talent. Just fantastic. Uh, it's got a gorgeous ballad on here called If I Ever Loved You. And uh, it's got steamy love songs like Gentle Hands and Denim, as well as some beautiful slow anthems like U-Shaped Box and Land of the Free. And there's uh, one of the standouts on here. It's just a super infectious, rootsy song called Jonjo. That's just a, another standout on here. So yeah, this is an all around great album uh, with, with a variety of sounds, as I just mentioned. So uh, yeah, if, you, if you've missed this one, if you haven't checked this one out yet, don't let it go by. Check it out. Absolutely colored by Priscilla Renee. And yes, this one would definitely be in my top 15, possibly my top 10. And now we're coming up on the two that would definitely have been in my top 10 
of my 2018 albums, favorite albums list, if I had known about them, as I said. Uh, this one guy, I've talked about him before. Actually, earlier on in this video, I talked about him. This is Joe Satriani's 2018 album, What Happens Next. Uh, it's just fantastic. I'm sorry I didn't really discover this guy sooner. Uh, it, this one kicks off with a blistering rocker called Energy, and uh, it has epic tracks on it like Thunder on the Mountain, which kind of lives, lives up to its title. And then it detours into more soulful jams like Cherry Blossoms and Smooth Soul. Uh, just great slow jams. It's really... Uh, everything on this album really shows off the different sides of Satriani's guitar uh, virtuosity, in my opinion. And then, yeah, eventually this album kicks back into high gear on songs like Looper and Invisible. And then it comes to a, a very gentle, uh, soft, wonderful close with a ballad called Forever and Ever. It's just a wonderful... Uh, excellent closing track so yeah definitely check out Satriani if you love uh, if you like guitar work in general and if you like instrumental songs Satriani is a guy that is not to be missed uh, what happens next is his most recent album from 2018 this would definitely have been in my top 10 and now we come to my favorite 2018 discovery of 2019 this one I actually found for a whopping four dollars the CD was still new and sealed but it was in the used CD section uh, it is a great soul rock album by a band called The New Respects. It is called Before the Sun Goes Down. And uh, yeah, the, the album cover makes it look like a, a Motown album from the 60s. And it's honestly, it's not far off. It's a pretty good uh, visual cue as to what you'll find on the album. Some of the tracks like Frightening Lightning and Future make it sound like uh, Latter-day Jackson 5 or some uh, later Temptations kind of stuff. And then there are other songs like Freedom and Trouble which have a more rock sort of a sound, uh, reminiscent of Jimi Hendrix. And then there are still others on here that have a more decidedly modern sound to them, uh, like We Ain't Going Nowhere, which is the album opener, I believe. Uh, it feels like a very contemporary R&B sound. And then something, something to Believe In, which brings to mind early 2000s teen pop. And then there's a song on here called Trigger, which has a spooky, kind of a semi-bluesy sound which is a, a, a kind of a blend between something that Mark Ronson would produce and maybe a James Bond theme. So honestly, yeah, this is, so as you can tell from the influences that I mentioned, this is basically a 60s soul rock blend with a glaze of modern uh, contemporary R&B and soul sounds. So it's just a fantastic, fantastic album from front to back. Uh, and, and I mean, even the ballads on this album, they vary in sound. Uh, Come As You Are is a very 60s Aretha Franklin kind of a thing. Uh, but uh, another song called What Makes the World has a newer folk soul vibe. So just uh, do not miss this album if you haven't checked it out yet. It is called Before the Sun Goes Down. It is by The New Respects, and it definitely would have been in my top five from 2018. So yeah, a fantastic album. So what do you think of that little uh, recap of what I missed in 2018 as we close in on the final days of 2019 and the kickoff to list week? I hope you appreciated that and enjoyed it. And yes, as I said, that that, that little list is something I'm going to do uh, every year because I'm sure there's some a bunch of stuff I'm going to miss. And I'm sure there's a lot of stuff uh, particularly that I missed in 2019. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to assembling that list. Uh, at uh, a year from now. So uh, yeah, but anyway, uh, that's it for this video and for the beginning of my 2019 year-end spectacular-ish. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.